but can we afford not to? That's coming up tonight here, live at 5. Now, from the ATV News Center and every city and town in the Maritimes, this is the ATV Evening News, live at 5. It is 5 o'clock, Monday, March 23rd, 1992. Hello again. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Murphy. How about that weather? <laughs> oh, I was I'll afraid you were going to ask that. You know, Richard Zorowski was in the newsroom earlier today complaining about the potholes and so on. Mm. Somehow I didn't have very much sympathy for him, Steve. It's a good job they took the tolls off the Cancel Causeway. That's all I can say, because if his car slowed down, they probably wouldn't let him on the island. <laughs> I'll tell you, and he's sitting over there not saying a thing about it, folks. You'd almost think that he had nothing to do with it. But it is something. We have to recognize that Richard is actually here the day of a storm or the day after that's a storm. Odd. So that is strange. That's odd. I actually heard from a chap today in Parsboro, Nova Scotia, who says, I've noticed that every time there's any really lousy weather, Richard Zorowski is nowhere around. <laughs> anyway, he's here because he could, couldn't get out of the driveway. <laughs> Another maritime mystery. We should have Bill Jessen look into that. I'm Nancy Regan. We have got the latest on the weather, the apologies and the predictions in yeah. just a few minutes. And a bit later, predictions of another kind, as Steve speaks with Newfoundland Premier Clyde Wells about what will happen with the Constitution and the Cod War. Predictions of yet another kind here, Nancy, as we look at the Academy Awards. Seven days to go. Tonight we're behind the scenes looking at the lobbying and all the arm twisting that goes on before the envelope, please. Well, Jonathan, we've got weather first at five tonight. A lot of people are grumbling about what seems much more like winter than spring, but nowhere is that grumbling any louder than on Cape Breton, which is being battered by yet another snowstorm as we speak. And ATV's Randy McDonald points out this one comes only one day after a 40-centimeter winter blast on the weekend. Sunday's blizzard was typical of the series of winter storms which have been lashing Cape Breton. The snow is accompanied by high winds, which reduces visibility and makes life anything but normal. Yesterday, air flights were grounded, the Cancel Causeway was closed, and just about every activity was cancelled. As if the weekend blizzard weren't enough, it is snowing heavily again in Sydney today. And by the time this little dusting is over, the weather office says we'll have yet another 20 centimeters of snow. Everyone in Cape Breton, it seems, is talking about the weather. Many, of course, are complaining. I drive bus and I wish I was in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Tough year? Tough year, yeah. Roads are ridiculous. I'm not too pleased with it. I, tra uh, I travel every day on the road, so it's, uh, it's a little trying at times. I don't really like it that much. I don't ski, so just can't wait till the spring. I've had enough, yes, definitely. But not all are ready to condemn a winter which just doesn't seem to want to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty good, making a little money off it. Why? Uh, just showing the driveways and stuff. I'm not complaining. Great to be alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's, right and there's people and other things that are worse off in life. For those who keep track of such things, in the Sydney area, we have already had 350 centimeters of snow this winter. That is well beyond the average seasonal snowfall. And we still have two months to go. In Sydney, Randy McDonald, ATV News. All right, thank you, Randy. Joining us now here at the ATV Weather Center, meteorologist Richard Zorowski. I wouldn't say people are complaining about the uh, spring weather, but a lot of people have started referring to it as the infernal equinox as opposed yeah. to the vernal equinox. Well, you know, into the fourth day of spring, you like <laughs> to see some melting going on there, Steve. It certainly is infernal, especially if you shovel the stuff or drive it. If you haven't got an apology for it, how about an explanation <laughs> for it, Richard? What do you got? Well, Saturday we had a disturbance go to the south of, of the, uh, the maritime regions, and what happened with that disturbance was it got a chance to cut right across. Every time we try to talk about snow, something happens. Yeah, I know. It so sounds I, like it's the woodpecker. <laughs> the woodpecker is back. <laughs> Sorry. It cut across the southern areas of uh, Cape Breton Island and stalled, and now it's off into the maritime regions. Now, this is another disturbance that originated in the southern areas of Maine, right. and it's the same disturbance pushing through. And what about this that we have outside now? What well, right now, if you take a look at that satellite map, you can see it's swirling around, and there it is, just to the south of the maritimes, and it's going to be moving through Guysborough County and through through uh, parts of Cape Breton Island, and we're looking at about 20 centimeters of snow and freezing rain to boot, so it's going to be dicey out there, to say the least. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. Complete weather forecast details coming up, Nets. Thank you, guys. Snow days still on the subject of weather. Kids love them, and since February 1st, there have been a lot of them in this region. In some school districts, there have been as many as eight school days canceled because of snow. But while everybody loves a holiday, there is a price to be paid. ATV's Heather Proudfoot has more. Ah, to be a kid again. There's nothing quite like hearing your school listed among this storm and cancellations. You get a day off of school and you get to sleep in. So it's 
Yes, and I love it. It's school board officials like Al Casey here who make the final decisions about storm days. Casey opted today not to cancel well, school in the Halifax well, County well, District, but he's already had to call a lot more snow yes, days this year than he well, normally does. Normally, uh, we would have one to two, two uh, school days lost because of uh, weather conditions. This year, to date, it's been four. In fact, some districts in the region have had as many as eight storm days this year. And while it's something officials say is necessary for safety reasons, it's something that carries a hefty price tag for departments of education in each of the maritime provinces. In Nova Scotia, for example, the provincial government pays out an estimated $2.4 million a day in teachers' wages alone. So in terms of lost hours of work, snow days are costly. While there used to be a requirement that storm days be made up by students and teachers, provincial governments in the region no longer require that. And teachers continue to get paid whether they're in the classroom or not on snow days. The teachers union is not receptive to any suggestion that stop. You know, teachers put in a lot of extra time, even on storm days, for example. A lot of them are home uh, doing preparation work. They're marking papers. 